Today on Tri Curl Studios, we do a high gain amp shootout between the Black Star HT Stage 100 Mark II and the Mesa Boogie 3 channel 100 watt, so not the multi watt, dual rectifier. So I do have to reiterate here that this is a high gain amp head shootout. You're not gonna hear any cleans, you're not gonna hear any breakup or light rock or easy listening. It's gonna be a lot of I know I sound like an idiot when I do that. Anyway, I do have two sound samples for you today. The first of which is a more balanced EQ setting in drop C, and then we're still in drop C for the second one where we have a more scoop type setting.
All right, so there you go. There are the two sound samples for the Blackstar HT Stage 100 Mark II and the Mesa Boogie three channel 100 watt, so not the multi watt dual rectifier. Now, I'm doing this shootout, um, and I'll be doing a few others with the Blackstar, uh, just because I've been asked a lot, because uh, I do own the amp, and a lot of people are seeing it on the used market for like a fairly cheap price. Um, and they're just kind of trying to gauge uh, what they might be able to do with it. And a lot of people do comparisons with amps. They say, well, you know, how, how would it sound? Uh, like, can I get a dual rectifier type sound or a 6505 plus sound or this, that, or whatever. Um, so that's some of the amps that'll be doing shootouts with it to kind of help you. Now I do have to explain myself here as well because I used a TS9 for both. Um, the I started off with the Black Star. Um, I tried OD2 uh, without the TS9 and with the TS9, and then I cycled back and forth um, with OD1, and each time I got a more favorable sound in the moment, at least um, with OD1 and the Tube Screamer. And a lot of people hate you, and a lot of people love you when you uh, boost a Mesa dual rectifier. There's a lot of people, most people, there's more people that boost than don't boost with it. Um, I always go with what sounds good at the moment. Um, but that, that's kind of why I chose to use an Ibanez TS9 in boost mode for both of the amps. It's, that's where it sounded best. And also with the uh, HT Stage 100, um, for the ISF, I'm I'm almost all the way in uh, USA mode rather than the, the British mode. So anyway, I do want to at this point uh, do what I usually do for these videos and that's kind of what I've gained from uh, doing this type of a shootout here. And that's um, the HT Stage 100. To me, it's, it's a great recording tool. Um, I think it falls flat. Uh, Everyone says it, it lacks balls in its playing, and I, I thoroughly agree. Um, if you're looking to do high gain with it, it's something that it, you can, you'd be doing a lot of post to get it to sound really, really good, I think. Um, but as far as like a recording tool to get multiple types of sounds, um, and like rock tones, breakup tones, clean to all of these different things, that's where it really excels. Uh, when it comes to high gain tones, you can definitely get them. Uh, however, they do sound very dark and they do sound quite blanketed. Um, the HT Stage 100 does have a presence and resonance control, which is very nice. However, that presence control I'm not a big fan of just diming the presence control, but that's you just about have to do that with this amp. And even then, at that point, you're losing a lot of the low end. So a lot of times, what I find ends up happening with the HT stage, I didn't, I didn't do it in this one, um, just because I, I, I thought it would be a detriment to how the amp um, presents itself or how I present the amp, I guess you would say. Um, but a lot of the times you dime that presence, you have that resonance control set to around one or two o'clock. Uh, and then from there, you're, you're kind of bringing up all the frequencies to almost diming those as well. Um, and that's even with the volume coming up, that's the HT stage, uh, the HT series, I don't understand, like they're tube amps, but there's, they're tube amps that sound like they are solid state almost, if that makes any sense to you. Um, just where you, when you're turning up the volume, the frequencies don't react the way that they're supposed to. They, they don't like liven up and stuff like that. Uh, so what I figured would happen, uh, with this shootout is you would hear oh, for the HD stage and then ah, for the uh, dual rectifier and, and during the playback um, and during the editing stage that's really what I heard. Um, I found that 
with the scoop setting, it was a lot better than um, the, the more balanced EQ. I think just because when you're starting to bring up a lot of the frequencies, that's when um, the amp starts to react a little better or sound a little better. Um, but even then, when you're bringing up those frequencies, it's they're not reacting to each other and things still fall flat. So I do think that in the scoop setting, it sounded um, a heck of a lot better than the more balanced EQ setting. Um, but again, I think it's one of those amps where if you're gonna try it out, try it out loud. Um, and that's, that's really where you're gonna benefit things. So if you're trying it out, try it out with maybe two or three amps if you're in a store, if you're lucky enough. Um, or you know what, be one of those jerks that brings another head with you to try out that head so you can swap things out and hear that comparison before buying it. Um, I don't think it's a bad amp. That's my, that's my problem here. Um, the dual rectifier sounds like a dual rectifier, by the way. <laughs> feels like I'm just like pooping all over the uh, HT stage. I really do like that amp, but just not in this type of a setting. I, I really find that, again, it, it's more of a studio tool because you can get a whole heck of a lot of sounds out of it. And they're extremely usable, extremely musical. It's just I feel that for high gain, it sort of falls flat. Anyway, I'm, I'm done poo-pooing on the HT Stage 100, which I, I really like that amp. It's just that's how this is going to come across. Uh, so I say good day.